and welcome back to my channel and this is a super important video for all of you who are running community interest company projects gaining grant funding. So in this video I'm going to be talking about why you should be putting 5% of your budget for your grant applications towards an independent evaluator to do the evaluation work which gets sent to your grant funder. So in this video I'm going to be talking about what evaluation is, why it's important, what you need to know and why you need to be putting 5% aside for an independent evaluator and where you can get one from. It's a really important information, absolutely vital if you're running a community interest company. So before I get into that, please hit the subscribe button for everything to do with CICs, grant funding and social enterprises. So on this channel, I try to give you the most up-to-date information of what is required for community interest companies. I'm giving you real world tips from my own experience as a CIC owner over the last 10 years and also from my tribe, my CIC tribe. So I founded CIC tribe a couple of years ago and now we have a thriving community of members where um, I'm mentoring them and working with them all the time. So I'm seeing everything as it changes with grant funders. I'm seeing all the up-to-date struggles and what the solutions are. And I'm then putting that together and helping support them in the membership. So if you'd like to know more about CIC Tribe membership, do go to the description and jump on the link there and go over to my website and check that out. So why am I making this video, first of all? So a lot has changed with grant funders over the over 10 years that I've been a CIC. And what I've noticed is a far more now is uh, being requested by the grant funders in terms of evidence. And that has changed as we've gone along because of lots of factors. In the early days, they used to just dish money out and they weren't really doing any kind of monitoring. But that has definitely changed, especially since COVID, especially since fraud's gone up and also the expectation to prove where public spending is going, public money is going. That is why, essentially, um, they're asking for more and more evidence. So what constitutes evaluation? What is involved? So first of all, an, a, a grant funder will typically ask for the evidence of your spending. So you will have outlined what your budget is at the beginning of your grant project when you wrote the application. You'll have a budget that would have been approved. So then the next step is that you'll need to pay out money, uh, you know, pretty much identical to that a budget. Uh, you can make some changes, but you have to get them approved. So you'll need to evidence that money came out of the bank account. So you need the bank statements. You'll need invoices and receipts for all of those payments. So that's the financial side. Often that'll also involve making uh, spreadsheets, uh, making uh, bank statements redacted, and maybe even making references that correlate from the bank statement to the invoice and the receipt. So it's quite a lot of paperwork involved in that. The next thing is the actual project evidence. So you'll need to show that you have uh, delivered that project. You'll need to show that you have hashtagged in the grant funder, that you have used their logo as well on your uh, posters, your advertising, or your social media. So using their logo, using their hashtag. They will also ask for evidence, photos and videos to see that your project took place. They'll also want to see and hear from your community, from your participants. So they'll want to see evidence of feedback forms. Great way to do that is in the way of videos, but also feedback forms and collecting data, making graphs and statistics about what they thought and getting quotes as well and even case studies so some grant funders especially like children in need will ask you for actual case studies as well those will be anonymized um, but also grant funders will expect you to have and collect and keep the names and addresses of participants that is because at some point they may want to contact them so it's actually important that you collect that data and obviously you need to be able to legally store that data so you need to consider that with your policies as well so that is what evaluation is now you might be thinking, well, I can do that. That's fine. That's just, you know, collecting a bunch of stuff, you know, throughout the project, keeping up to date with it. But it's a lot of work. So you need to factor in, it is a lot of work. It's a lot of stress, especially at the end of the project when you have to handle this stuff over, correlate everything. You want to make sure, of course, you've been up to date as you've gone along. So using stuff like QuickBooks, photographing your receipts and uploading them as you go, connecting it with your bank statement. You could do all that with QuickBooks as you go along. And you can even name the project in QuickBooks as well. So that makes it really easy to then pull off a report at the end. Um, you can also use tools like ChatGPT, which I've used to write my reports before. So if you're not great at writing, you know, you can use some of these tools. So yes, there is a lot you could do yourself. And if you're just doing a small project, then fine, just do it yourself if you've got those skills. But factor in if you've, I mean, I'm neurodivergent, I've got dyslexia, so I will make mistakes on stuff like that. So I have to factor that kind of thing in. You might want to factor in, have you got the time? Have you budgeted in the time for you to do it on the grant application? Have you budgeted that in for you to do it. So those are things you need to factor in. But also this is now coming 
account with a lot of grant funders, that if you are running a grant project that is over £15,000, they will expect 5% to be for an independent evaluator. That's not you doing it, that's an independent evaluator. Look at it from their point of view. Why would they necessarily trust what you've delivered the project? What if you fudge your statistics? They would rather an independent evaluator did that because over 15,000 is then quite a lot of money and it's a lot of public money. So they want to be able to have that reassurance that you've got an independent evaluator to do that. An independent evaluator is a professional. They know what they're doing. So they're gonna do things to a much higher level than you are. To pay them 5% actually is reasonable. So, you know, you're talking around 1,500-ish, um, you know, and then obviously if you're running much larger projects, then yeah, still 5% of that. So being able to have that person in that independent evaluator means they'll work from the beginning of the project through it. You'll still have to do some stuff. You'll obviously have to collect things, audit things and hand them over to them. But they will be doing, handling that evaluation, making sure that you're legit, making sure you they can evidence that you are hitting all your targets. And then at the end, they're gonna be in charge of delivering that reporting to the grant funder. You will probably still have to have some work to do there. So you still need to budget yourself in to be able to obviously work alongside them. But essentially it's that independent evaluator that's gonna be doing the report. That is what you need to be factoring in. So have a consideration about factoring that into your budget. You might think, well, that's a big loss, 5%, but it is worth it. And actually it means it's a good thing because it means you can concentrate on doing what you're good at, which is the delivery of your projects. So you are you know, a facilitator, you may be a community artist, a counselor, therapist, whatever. Concentrate on that, do that, and actually just outsource that evaluation so it's off your plate. You don't have to worry about it. And then you know that you're gonna hit your targets and you're gonna be able to continue to get grant funding year after year and you don't have that stress. So outsource it. Now, the next question you might have is, well, where am I gonna outsource it to? So one thing we've got on our website for CIC Tribe is we have the CIC Marketplace. So on the CIC Marketplace, we do have some evaluators on there and we are growing that list. I'm trying to offer you um, different ones in different areas. So we're growing that as it is at the moment. You could also put out an advert, maybe on LinkedIn that you're hiring or on the local press. So you could also hire somebody and look them up that way. So that's how you find the grant evaluators. And obviously make sure you check their work as with any kind of hiring. Don't pay people up front either, pay them after they've done the work just in case they don't deliver it. So that's another tip. Just to say as a little warning, if you don't evaluate your projects properly, you can end up breaching your projects and that could be absolutely devastating. It could mean you'd have to close your CIC, you have to maybe pay money back. So just a little word of caution there. I hope that was useful. I know it's a lot of food for thought. So like I said, if you have got any questions about any of that, do jump in the uh, comments section or go over to my my website and jump in the chat box. I hope that was useful.